But thank you very much for, for, for the introduction and also thanks to, to the organizers of uh, the, today's conference, the, the, Arctic, the Arctic Councils from the five Nordic countries. Uh, and I think you brought together here both uh, a, an impressive lineup of, of speakers, but I can see also a very impressive uh, crowd of uh, participants here. And uh, it is, for me, a, a privilege uh, to, to be here, not only because I can recognize uh, familiar faces uh, among, among the audience, um, but also I look forward to, to our discussion uh, and also to take uh, a, few, a few questions uh, when, when we have made our opening remarks. I think it, it was the, uh, the English poet uh, journalist and, and uh, literary critic uh, G.K. Chesterton, who once said that culture, like science, is no protection against demons. And this somewhat pessimistic assessment of uh, human nature might often be merited, but I will try today to use facts and reason today in order to protect us against one particularly demon that have haunted the issue of uh, culture uh, and free trade. The demon that I will like to put to rest is uh, the fear in, in some circles that a future free trade uh, agreement between the European Union and the United States will somehow deliver a death blow to Europe's creative industries and cultural diversity. Critics are claiming that uh, cutthroat competition unleashed by a free trade agreement will allow Hollywood and uh, American media giants to gradually kill off European uh, filmmakers and undermine public service uh, TV and radio in, in Europe. They fear that existing programs and national subsidies to place, in place to support cultural diversity and artistic uh, 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 production uh, will uh, disappear uh, because of this agreement. Europe will surrender to American pressure and our famous cultural exception will be ter terminated once and for all according to uh, the critics. And let me just underline right away that the critics are wrong and that such fears are unfounded. A free trade agreement between EU and the US will not have negative consequences for Europe's creative industries. The EU will not abandon the cultural uh, exception within its audiovisual politics, and the EU will not shy away from protecting and promoting cultural diversity. And let me explain why, because it is important. Last year, on the 14th of June, the EU Council of Ministers adopted the mandate for the European Commission on how the Commission should conduct the free uh, trade negotiations with the US. The mandate describes in clear and specific terms what the EU wants to achieve in the negotiations, which areas the agreement should cover, and how the negotiations should proceed. It was my predecessor, Pia Olsen Dyr, who represented Denmark uh, in the meeting. And it is no secret that this meeting was long, it was difficult, it lasted 12 hours, and it required a lot of diplomatic uh, maneuvering. The outcome of the meeting, however, was very clear with regard to the audiovisual sector. The EU Council of Ministers decided that this sector will uh, be excluded from the agreement with the US. It will simply not be covered by the agreement and consequently the Commission is not authorized to negotiate anything with the Americans related to the audiovisual uh, sector. This is how matters stand and if things were to change during the long negotiation uh, process now ahead of us, then it would require consensus 
uh, among the 28 EU member uh, states and also, in fact, had to be uh, accepted by the European Parliament. Um, and given how sensitive <clears throat> and important the exception of audiovisual sectors is for some EU member uh, states, I don't see this happening. I can think of at least one member state, and I can tell you the capital uh, starts with a P, um, that would categorically object to changing the mandate in this direction. And the capital of this member state begins, yeah, again, with P. I think you guessed it. And I, in, in fact, also totally uh, agree in this uh, way of uh, seeing things. So I would like to confront the demon about free trade and culture head on by stressing that this agreement will not threaten European uh, culture. The programs and subsidies in place to support Europe's creative industries will not be abolished or negatively affected by the agreement. This is the situation uh, today. That is also the reason why I'm reluctant to speculate uh, about what the possible consequences might be for Europe's, European, Europe's cultural industries in the event that culture was in included in the agreement eventually. It is simply too uh, speculative. What is less speculative, however, are the likely economic consequences of an ambitious agreement between uh, the EU and the US. And well, I know seen from uh, an artistic way or uh, angle, economics are perhaps, perhaps not the most important uh, thing in, in the world. But still, this is what creates uh, this is what creates the background for also supporting the cultural sector and, in fact, financing uh, a strong welfare society, which I think we all claim to in the Nordic uh, countries. So when it comes to the economic consequences, a study done for, for the uh, Commission predicts that uh, an ambitious deal with EU and the US would increase the uh, size of European economy with around 120 billion euros, corresponding to amount 1.5, um, uh, one, one, yeah, no, 0 0.5 uh, uh, percent of uh, the GDP. And that is, in fact, a lot. It also predicts that wages, both those of skilled and those of unskilled uh, workers, uh, will almost likely rise with around the same amount as a result of an ambitious uh, agreement. Finally, we as uh, consumers will all experience cheaper products and a greater uh, variety. For Denmark specific specifically, uh, the US market constitutes our largest export uh, outside uh, the EU. A Danish consultancy group has uh, uh, recently calculated that Danish exports to the US would increase by 14 percent, uh, which corresponds to 14 billion Danish kroner, which is uh, also uh, quite uh, a lot. And for all European countries, our economies are uh, based on exports. For Denmark, every fourth job uh, is depending on our exports, and that's why this is so important and uh, agreement. So in short, there are many positive uh, effects from a good trade agreement across the Atlantic. Economic gains, however, it is not the whole story. There are other positive consequences that I think deserve to be mentioned uh, as well. An ambitious free trade agreement between Europe and the US would also give a significant boost to transatlantic relations in a time when we are struggling on both sides of the Atlantic to keep up with rising powers in Asia, South America, and uh, beyond. And also when it comes to handling these conflicts that are arising now, both in Europe, but also in, uh, in the Middle East. It was the American scholar uh, 
Joseph Nye, who back in the 19th invented the phrase soft power in international politics. Nye defined the term as the ability of states to influence other states, not by the size of their armed forces, but by being role models in political stability, economic prosperity, and cultural excellence. For many years, soft power has been Europe's strong suit. You could call it a comparative advantage for Europe. And although it, it might be an oversimplified cliche that Europeans are from Venus and Americans are from Mars, it is not far off the mark when we compare Europe's military spending uh, <clears throat> with that of uh, the US. The US spends much more on the military than all the EU countries together. Also, when it comes to these expend expenditures that in, are in fact spent in Europe, therefore, there's little doubt in my mind that we need to take active measures to preserve Europe's attractiveness in a globalized world. If we want Europe to remain a global partner capable of influencing decision makers also in Washington, Beijing, Moscow and New Delhi, we must preserve our soft power. And our soft power is founded on high standards of living and economic prosperity. Western governments are often criticized for, for not doing enough to raise global standards in some of the areas from which we derive of uh, much of our soft power. Areas such as sustainable development, global labor rights, or fighting climate change. Such criticisms may sometimes be warranted also, although Western companies and governments uh, are by far the most progressive in these areas. The TTIP offers a chance for the EU and the US to commit each other even more on this uh, agenda. Fighting climate change or preventing the use of child labor. Indeed, a whole chapter of TTIP addressing exactly such issues is now being drafted. If it's my hope that we can uh, recommit each other to do more in these areas and that we can set a precedent for what other countries, also those less concerned with such issues uh, than us. Uh, and this should include uh, in few future trade agreements. For these reasons as well, it is of strategic importance for uh, the EU and for uh, countries on the European continent that we managed to conclude a free trade agreement uh, with uh, the US. So, ladies and gentlemen, with, with so many uh, producers and distributors of cultural content in, in this room today, I would also like, of course, to, to take the opportunity, as, as I also started up, uh, in acknowledging the important role that uh, you play when it comes to uh, the economy in, in Denmark and, and other uh, Nordic uh, countries. Uh, <clears throat> alone in Denmark, roughly 85,000 people are in, employed in the creative industries, and there is a turnover uh, here uh, in Denmark uh, that is more than 200 billion uh, Danish uh, kroner. And uh, I'm aware the different the, the, the significant differences that exist between uh, the various areas uh, in the sector uh, when you call it all the creative industries. But, and I know that some industries are still struggling uh, to regain the sales and for profitability which they enjoyed before the global financial crisis in uh, 2008. But I am very encouraged with uh, the positive trend in, in these numbers uh, now, uh, which are bettering since the low point in 2009. And I also hope that the trend is continuing when more recent numbers become available uh, soon. So your work is not uh, only valued and respected by millions of fans worldwide who flock to the cinemas to watch 
uh, our movies uh, and other cultural products, reading uh, our books, it simply delivers uh, an important contribution to the Danish and to the economy also in the other Nordic countries. So ladies and gentlemen, I think this will be enough from uh, me for now. I look forward to taking the questions and also to continue the dialogue on TTIP and culture. I am very interested in dialogue uh, with the different TTIP stakeholders. It might be companies, NGOs, my colleagues from other member states, parliamentarians, but also, of course, cultural institutions and uh, artists. And I hope you will keep participating in these uh, debates and I also hope that I have provided just a few arguments for the fact that a few trade agreement between the EU and the United States will not deliver a death blow to Europe's creative industries uh, and it will not deliver a death blow to our cultural diversity, uh, but it will, uh, it will give possibilities for economic development and more jobs both in Europe and in the US, which is to the benefit of uh, all of us. Thank you very much.